Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of the Geek Tech Show. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing two different head-to-head -head over here, Rose's sneakers. So we have here on the left side, the Contendo, it is the Timberland, Timberland, and this is the World Hiker. Rose's, the Merrill, and this one is the Ontario version, they're both mid-calf and you can get them in different styles and colors so which one is the one that is right for you either is it this one or either is it this one right here well it looks like one of those designs copied the other who copied who is the first question well the mellow actually came up with this design i think more recently whereas the timberland had this for quite some time so this is definitely the mellows answer to the Timberland now when you look at them they look very similar and if you want to look at the tracks the tracks are similar as well but once you put your feet inside you're gonna see a big difference between the two so with the Timberlands it is a little more flexible, the shoe itself. A lot more warmer inside. I like how it feels in the inside. And this is probably one of the few Timberland shoes that I actually recommend and I actually like. I'm super picky when it comes to shoes. And those shoes feel really good inside. Like the inside feels good. And it also feels good when you're walking. This feels more like a boot actually. There is a lot more protection over here when it comes to the elements. And the great thing about this is that when you're stepping on things, you can actually feel it. And that's actually a good thing. So I like the cushioning here as well. Also it comes with those laces, which I'm not so crazy about. And unfortunately one of them was not the same size as the other, which is a big bummer. On the other hand, the Ontario shoe, this one also has pretty good laces. I like the laces so much more. But when you're stepping on this, it feels as if you're stepping next to nothing. This doesn't feel like you're stepping on anything at all. In fact, you're feeling as if you're stepping barefoot on the ground, which is actually what Vibram is so famous about and yet it has so much protection over here as well. So that is the bigger difference between both of those. In terms of the leather quality, this one actually shows its mark, like it actually gets aged, which is makes it look pretty sophisticated and really nice. But in other ways, if you are really OCD about your shoes. I don't know, this doesn't look like it's gonna edge. Um, it's not gonna actually get old as good as the Timble lens. That being said, I do like the way I feel when I step on those. Those feel like, they don't feel like shoes, they feel like slippers. Pretty much, although those look like not even shoes, they look like actually hiking boots those shouldn't pass as a hiking boot they don't feel as a hiking boot the material is way too soft and it is definitely not a hiking boot between the two i think this one is actually a much better quality wise product it's gonna probably last much longer i think this feels much better actually on your feet and I'm having a huge hard time deciding which one is the perfect shoe here. Usually I pick between one design or another. In this specific case, I might end up keeping both of them because I like them so much. But there's only one problem. I'm not sure I want to have the black version because every kind of dust and anything that is white really stands out on it. So that's the only grip I have of the old black version of those shoes, although they look kind of nice. On the other hand, with this one, 
I do like the decor. I, I like the way it's actually made, but one of them wasn't fitting me as well as the other one, which is actually the big case with some shoes that I I'm super picky when it comes to buying them. So, what I think is, it really comes down to style in this one because both of them are offering great protection. But also, if you're going to be traveling to places and you want something that's pretty warm on your feet, I recommend the Timberlands. They feel much warmer. Those could be used even in the springtime because they're a little bit more cold. Though. I don't know why, but they are. And in terms of styling, I think this one kind of wins it over. Maybe. It's very hard to tell. So what you see here is two different kind of shoes and yet they are almost identical. So the big difference between those two is actually really funny, the shoelaces. Although they look almost the same in every possible way, the ones that are coming from Timberlands are not as great as the ones that are coming from Mel. That is actually the biggest difference between the two. There's also a price difference as well. This is going at 80 bucks at Moose's Jaw, which is actually a website. You should check it out. Where else, this one right here, the cheapest ones I've found is 110. Normally they go for 150, maybe even 160 dollars. But between those two, this one I think gives you the better value because it is much cheaper. Also, the material is slightly, I think, better. It doesn't get scratches easily. It looks so much more sophisticated as well. And I think it might actually last longer. This is almost the same in both of those shoe brands. So taking a look at both of them, you can see right here, it looks nearly identical too. Now, there was another issue that I have with these shoes, although they feel so much great when I put them on, is that how it goes and the quality of the leather itself. And I don't know if you can see and tell the difference. I only wore this once. And already you can see stretch marks and aging spots all over this shoe. So I hate to have it look super old in a very short period of time. I like my shoes to stay pretty good for at least a year after I purchase them. And I don't think this is going to be the case with this one. Although it is designed to edge this way, to, to look old, I don't think this is something I signed up for when I actually bought them. And the marks, you can easily see and they get scratched easily too. Very easily scratched. So this is something for you to keep in mind. I don't think the leather here is as good as the suede material that we're getting over here instead. But overall, both of those kicks, and I mean kicks, they are not actually hiking shoes, should do pretty well for you regardless. And I do recommend both of them for almost everyone who wants to have a casual yet very fun shoe that you can wear almost anywhere. Here it is, both shoes, and which is the winner? It's really super hard to tell. But there's a few issues that I'm gonna outline about both of those shoes. So we both know that they're not the best hiking shoes out there. They're more like casual shoes that you can wear anywhere you go. So let's go ahead and talk about First of all, the Timberland right here. This is the Timberland shoe. Number one issue that I actually have with it is actually the laces themselves. They're a little bit harder to tie them up. I wish they gave you a little extra more laces because it is needed to do a double knot tie. That is basically the biggest grip I have of the shoe. Like over here, there is not enough cushion for this to be a, a walk boot. So this is not good if you're taking it for something other than casual everyday 
use. This is great if you're flying, driving, doing activities that are casual but not heavy duty, yet it does have a very good track system right on this. On the other hand, the other shoe that we have here is the Dakota. I love how I feel when I put my foot into this shoe. This one is the metal shoe and it has the Vibram insoles. Legendary, one of the best insoles. And when you put your foot into a well-designed Vibram shoe, you can tell the difference day and night. I wish this insole was actually in the Timberland shoes. This is how much I like it. I like the fit. It is if you're putting your foot inside of a glove. It practically feels so natural to be in here. The more I wear this, the more I start to really like this shoe. And initially when I just got it the first time, I was like, ah, this doesn't feel as good as I expected. But you know what? After a few days, this like naturally feels like part of your foot. It's like the weirdest shoe I ever wore. It's like a glove. So I do like this about it. I don't like the leather itself. Uh, not the best. Now, if you can get this on sale for 119 bucks, I think it's a really great bargain. And the weather itself, like you will see marks over here, but, but it is natural. It's supposed to do that. Other than that, it's really hard to make a decision here because both of them are stylish, both of them are good looking, and both of them feel just right in every sense of the way. The shoelace is the only biggest grip that I have of this specific one. Other than that, I haven't found any reason to dislike the shoe either. But when it comes to both of them, it is really hard to make a decision. The looks is one thing. Both of them look great. The feel is good too. And they're just different designs. And yet, it is hard to make a difference. And they all come in different shoes, uh, different kind of sizes too. Now, this one, the Timber, not the Timberland, this specific one, the metal, actually has a walkout version of it. And it has a waterproof version of the same exact shoe here. This one is water resistant. So that is the biggest difference between those two. So overall, I think I give this one 9 out of 10. Almost nothing gets a 10. This one also gets a 9 out of 10. And pretty much, it's really a toss-up. I believe this is a tie between both of those shoe brands. And it's up to you to decide which one you want to get. Because there's going to be a link right down below to both of those where you can get them at the cheapest possible price on Amazon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you totally enjoyed this Geek Tech Show episode. And if you want to see another one, please subscribe to this channel and see you in another episode of the Geek Tech Show.